For weeks now, Ukrainian troops have been battling Russian forces in a make-or-break offensive. And as national security correspondent David Martin reports, a world away from the front lines, the U.S. military is playing a vital role. No other American has been more deeply involved in the war in Ukraine than General Mark Milley, chairman of the Joint Chiefs of Staff. What do you have up first this morning? About 10 minutes, I got a call with uh, General Zaluzhny. General Valery Zaluzhny, commander of Ukraine's armed forces. I talk to him uh, every week as a minimum, sometimes twice a week, three times a week. That much? Mm -hmm. It's 6.45 a.m. Three hours later, he takes us underground deep in the bowels of the Pentagon, into a top secret command center where all the intelligence collected from the battlefields of Ukraine is monitored by his staff. This is the crew that uh, keeps uh, Secretary and I informed on a day-to-day -day basis of what's happening out there in, in the current operation. How well can you see through the fog of war from here? The fog and friction of war is always present, but our information systems are pretty good. Since the war began, this center has kept a 24-7 watch on Russia's catastrophic invasion. Indiscriminate strikes against cities and the leveling of entire villages without let-up. <laughs> According to the latest casualty estimates, Ukraine has lost 200,000 soldiers killed or wounded, and Russia a staggering 300,000. You've seen your share of combat. Have you ever seen combat like this? No. And I've been in a lot of firefights. I've been blown up several times in vehicles and mines and IEDs and RPGs, but never to this degree of intensity. For the last 100 days, Ukrainian troops have been firing artillery at what U.S. officials say is an unsustainable rate as they try to break through Russian front lines. The Ukrainian offensive, which Milley helped plan, is running into stiffer than expected resistance. It's going slower than people anticipated for the war games that were done, where we helped them do their war gaming and planning. But that's the difference between war on paper and real war. So this is real people getting really killed and real vehicles are really blowing up. So people tend to slow down in situations like that, but it's very deliberate and they're making progress every day. They're taking so many casualties. How much more slow and deliberate progress can they stand? Your question is how long will the political will of the Ukrainian people withstand this level of carnage? And the same applies to Russia, by the way. That's an unknown answer. Maps on the TV screens, these are unclassified because we're here, track the painful progress of the offensive. It looks like the Ukrainians, the yellow, have cut a pretty good wedge out of the, uh, the Russian lines. That's true, yeah. What physically is that that they've had to get through? Well, it's minefields, it's trenches, it's ditches, it's small 10, 12 man, 100 kilo teams armed with anti tank munitions. What other defenses are they going to encounter if they make it through those? Those orange lines you see there are Russian trench lines. And in between those orange lines, which you don't see, are minefields and tank ditches and what's called dragon's teeth, barbed wire, that sort of thing. This is a multi-layered Russian defense in depth. The U.S. advertises the $44 billion in military equipment it has committed to Ukraine, but says very little about the equally valuable intelligence. Do you share what you know about Russian troop movements with Ukraine? Our intelligence pipes to Ukraine are, are quite open, uh, for sure. And, and of course, CIA and interagency, NSA, all those guys. So, uh, but there's pretty open pipes uh, on intel to Ukraine. So are you helping Ukraine select targets? Target selection and authority to strike is with Ukraine. What we do is provide them situational awareness. But you tell them there's a command post over there, there's an ammunition dump over there. We'll give them the situational awareness uh, as best we can tell. So this really is a, uh, a proxy war. You don't have boots on the ground. You're not making decisions, but you're helping Ukraine kill Russians. We're helping Ukraine defend themselves is what we're doing. The Ukrainian goal is to reach the crossroads city of Melitopol, where they would be in position to cut Russian occupied territory in two. How much longer do they have to keep fighting before winter? The weather uh, folks are telling us that you're looking at something in the um, probably the beginning of October before the rains come. And it won't be the winter 
uh, it'll be the rains that make the ground soft and make it unacceptable for ground maneuver. Ukraine's President Zelensky has said he will keep fighting until all of the territory Russia now occupies is liberated. That area is not a small area. Uh, that area, roughly speaking, is about the eastern theater of war in the American Civil War. And that goes from basically Washington, D.C. to Atlanta. And that is a very large piece of ground. So uh, they've got a tough fight ahead of them. It's not over. And if they don't achieve their objectives, does that mean we're into a forever war? So neither side at this point in time have achieved their political objectives through military means. And the war will continue until one side or the other has achieved those means, or both sides have determined it's time to go to a negotiating table and they can't achieve their objectives through military means. And that time is not yet.